Hey everybody, Scott Gerlach with Stackhawk. This is a Hawk Talk Quick Hit. Today's Quick Hit, we're talking about the Stackhawk YAML, the configuration file that runs the Stackhawk scanner, HawkScan. So let's get started. If you followed along in our Getting Started video, You've seen that the getting started flow creates a basic YAML file for you, asks you a couple questions and creates the basic outlines. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's commented out. Let's go through those things today so we can figure out how to make this thing work. So as you can see, I've started off with my basic stack hockey YAML here. We're playing with my favorite project, the Volney Django project. Down below, I'll put a link to the Volney Django Git repository. It's public. You can check it out and play with it yourself. So here we go. The very first thing we start off with, and as you can see, I've got my handy dandy stack hawk documentation up here so I can reference personally, uh, as you should too, how these configuration files are work, what values they accept, etc. So the very first thing we start off with is the app section. Now this is YAML, so YAML is very specific about spacing and indentation. Uh, all of these things are very, very specific. If you run into some kind of an error and, and Hawkscan is telling you, I can't read this thing, very first thing to check is your indentation. So we've got the app section. The app section contains most of the scanning configuration for Stackhawk Hawkscan scanner. Inside of there, we've got the application ID. This is the only thing that the platform creates for you. So the, the Stackhawk portal creates this application ID, which is a UUID. Uh, it's very specific, and this is how we group scans together in an application context. As you can see, I've written here, this is my app ID. There are many like it, but this one is mine. So your app ID should be different than this. The very next thing, uh, in the getting started flow, it asked me what environment I'd be working in, and this is the development environment. So I've got the development environment set up here. The other thing it asked me was, where is my host running? So I answered this as localhost port 8020. That's where it actually is running. And you can see that Django is over here running on port 8020 for the polls app. So that's the basics of a scanner. We can make this scan work today with just those three settings. So let's try a scan. So once again, we've saved our API key in the environment file. We've sourced that into our local environment settings. So we can pull that into the Hawk scan scanner. Now we can just run the Hawkscan scanner. So let's do that. So Hawkscan is starting up. It's looking at the YAML file that we have configured. This file today only has those three settings, application ID, environment, and where to find the local host. So very quickly it's going to start spidering the site, seeing what's happening. Trying to find all the links and the forms and the inputs that are interesting so it can test against them. So we'll let that scan run and we'll come back to the scan. Now let's take a look at the scan results from our basic Hawkscan configuration. And we have our results finding summary. So we've got one cross-site scripting that I found. It found some cookie, no HTTP flag only settings, and to absence of anti-CSRF tokens, which is right because I excluded them in my app. And then the X content type headers. Obviously these lows we probably in a real environment wouldn't look at or might take a cursory look at, but this high is something we would definitely dig into. If we wanted to troubleshoot one of these issues, we could use this link at the bottom of these results. So we could just follow the URL. It will dump us into that exact scan output, and here we can see our cross-site scripting. We'll go into the details of what's in this panel and how to use it in a later video. But that's what a scan looks like without authentication and the basic Stackhawk configuration. So the next thing that we've got commented out, uh, but it's important, is this risk level. So risk level is designed for you to tell Stackhawk how important is this application to the business. Is it of critical importance? Uh, is it pretty important, but we could get by without it for a while? Or is it if it died and it was gone for a week, we'd be okay? I've decided that the vulnerable Django app that we have here is of medium importance to the company. If it went down, we'd be okay for a while, but we'd need to get it back up. The next section is app data type. So this is the this is the section where you can tell the Hawkscan scanner and Stackhawk what kind of data am I handling. And so 
This particular app at best holds some PII data, so personally identifiable information. So we'll mark it as such. The other values that you can put in here, PII, PCI, financial data, PKI data, so we're talking about payment cards, uh, financials, public key infrastructure, health insurance data. If you're not sure what this should be, it's safe to leave it blank. Same with risk level. All right, very next thing we're looking at here is the anti-CSRF parameter. The vulnerable Django app has in it anti-cross-site request forgery. So the ability to make a user perform some action on your website while they're on another website through some kind of JavaScript or some kind of forum post. Those things require some kind of nonce token to be able to authenticate that they read the page first, then submitted that token along with the action. In Django, the name of this token is CSRF middleware token. So the, that's what this value is here. The next thing we have is exclude paths. So exclude paths is a list in YAML. So that's why it looks the way it looks. In, in our particular case, there's an admin page to this Django app. And we don't want the scanner to scan the log out because what that does is log the scanner out and it can't find more things. So we've excluded the admin logout path here. And now the scanner will not scan that particular path. And that is the basics of the Hawk scan scan. The next thing we're going to get into is how to authenticate. The Django app has form authentication. So we'll look at form based authentication. There are other types of authentication that Hawkscan supports today, and those types are header bearer authorization type tokens uh, that it receives through some kind of authentication process, or a third party token, which if your authentication system is very, very complicated, you can generate a script that goes out and grabs the token, puts it into the environment, and you can have uh, the Stack Hawk scanner consume that. So let's get into the authentication section, shall we? Here we have authentication. This is the very first part of this section, just defining, hey, inside of here is where we're going to talk about authentication. To really understand how to configure the authentication section, let's take a look at the app. Here you can see we've got our vulnerable Django app running. To get to the page where you log in, it's just the admin link. So let's do some inspection. If we're trying to figure out how to make an authentication work, it's good to know that you can use the Google or Firefox or any browser uh, inspection tool. So we'll go to inspect and we'll look at some of the elements on this page. So here we can see that our username field is username. So that's where we configured this section. Username field, username. And then we can also see that the password field is named password. So the password field is password. So let's look at some of the other things that may or may not be in this form. Here in the form submission, we can see that the other parameter that we've set is this next parameter. So next equals admin is how we've set this other parameter. Next equals admin. The other thing we're looking for in this form is the logged out indicator. So obviously we're logged out in this particular screen. So let's look and see what's in here that will tell us that we're logged out still. So I think the form ID login form is a good indicator and which is why we have that in the logged out indicator section. So log in form indicates that we are logged out. When we are presented with the logged in login form, that means we have to log in still. So let's go ahead and log in and see what the web browser sends to the server on the backside. So our username is admin, and our password is admin password. And we'll click, click the login button. So you can see that now we're logged in. So let's look at that very first request. So the very first request we sent was a post, and it got a 302. So the request form data that we sent was this CSRF middleware token. So we have that configured 
here as an anti-CSRF parameter. It's going to grab, the scanner will grab this token every time and pass it along with the requests. <clears throat> We've got our username field, username, and it's set to admin. We also have our password field, password, and set to admin password. And also our next parameter, so next equals admin. The other things that are interesting here are the response headers. Because Vulnerable Django uses cookie authentication, we can go ahead and look at some of this authentication request and set some of our cookie authentication section. So we can see that in our cookie authorization section, there are cookie names that we need to look at. One of them is CSRF token. So we will call this particular line CSRF token. We will look at our other cookie. So we've got session ID and the CSRF token. Now when the scanner scans, it will find those cookies in any responses from the server and pass them back as part of the requests. So let's configure our test path section. So we've got test path. What path do we want to look at? So we've got this set in our configuration file as slash admin slash auth slash user. So I know if I'm logged in based on what just happened in the app, if I'm logged in and I go to the slash admin slash auth slash user path, we should see a 200 in the response. So if we look at the response for this page, we can see that we get an HTTP 1.1 200 OK. So what we're going to tell the scanner is in the header, we're looking for a 200. Again, this is another regex pattern. You can actually make this really complicated and say dot star 200 uh, and then look for any of these other pieces of this header that are in that are in there in a successful request and configure that there. Now we've looked at how to authenticate into the app and we can have the scanner use this information to actually log in and test the admin section as well as the unauthenticated section of the application. Let's go ahead and run a scan with this configuration. The very first thing the scan will do is try to log in and then try that test path to make sure that authentication is working. Once it's done that, it will start spidering the site, as you can see here. Now that that authenticated scan is done, let's take a look at those results. So once again, you can see here that we've got our Hawk scan that ran and we spidered the site and it looked like it got into the admin section. So there's 168 URLs, which is different number, sorry, 178 URLs which is a different number than the authenticated scan. Oh man, I'm pretty sure he meant to say unauthenticated there. So sad. So it ran through and did all of its stuff and testing and it found more issues, but still only that one high. So we've still got that cross-site scripting reflected issue that we looked at earlier. We've got uh, anti-CSRF token missing on some of the admin pages now. Uh, we've got HTTP only flag on the cookie missing in some of the admin pages. Those are probably things you may want to take a look at so people can't sniff cookies for your admin section and compromise those sections. X content type headers missing. Probably I wouldn't do that, do anything with those. And then application error disclosure. These two pages are returning errors to the web browser that are probably a little too verbose. Again, we'll take a look at how to troubleshoot those issues inside the Stackhawk application in a later episode. Those are the basics of the Stackhawk scanner configuration using the vulnerable Django app. We'll go into a little bit more detail on some new features that are coming out. And if you haven't seen it before, check out the Getting Started, which is linked below.